In a modern world that insists on productivity and efficiency as capitalist ideals, the return of the bimbo is revolutionary. I'm Yoon Kim, and this is MTV News Need to Know. From Kim Petras' new EP, Slut Pop, to TikTok influencers, many young people are embracing bimboism as a feminist and even anti-capitalist movement, and they're giving it an inclusive makeover. The bimbo, historically defined as an attractive but seemingly dumb woman, has been an archetype since the 50s and used pejoratively to describe Marilyn Monroe and Reese Witherspoon's Elle Woods. But in the last couple of years, the hyper-feminine spaced out trend has come back thanks mostly to TikTok, and the definition has evolved. Influencer Chrissy Chlapeka explains who the Gen Z bimbo is. She's actually a radical leftist who's pro-sex work, pro-Black Lives Matter, pro-LGBTQ, pro-choice, and will always be there for her girls' gays and nays. Today's bimboism is also a diversion from choice feminism, which is about the individual and more in line with community-based feminism where we're uplifting one another. It's not just about skinny white blondes and pink lipstick anymore. Bimbo TikTok includes people of all different shapes, gender identities, and races, and the message is to do whatever it takes to love yourself and others, whether it's wearing a ton of makeup, going to therapy, or ending a toxic relationship. And over the past few decades, this surge in girl boss feminism empowered and encouraged women to rightfully take on roles once stereotypically held by men. But now we're seeing a reconsideration of girl bossification as many young people are rethinking their roles in capitalism. And Gen Z bimbos are rejecting preconceived notions that they need to be a productive member of society with high worker value. Arielle Richards wrote in Vice that for many feminists whose coming of age was centered around girl bossification, bimboism represents a shift towards finding empowerment by simply refusing to participate. Online bimbos say that if not being ambitious equals being dumb, then f it, that's what they are. So many of us have stories about being put in appearance-based boxes. And my big break as a journalist was hosting a documentary series for Playboy focusing on drug trafficking. But because of how I looked and who I was working for, people didn't believe that I was actually a reporter investigating hard narcotics, assuming that I would stick to soft news or wasn't built for dangerous on the ground coverage. Up until recently, many viewed bimboism as anti-feminist because of the perception that it prioritized the male gaze, and that these women dumbed themselves down and changed their appearance to be attractive to men. The word was an insult, and other women saw bimbos as both the ideal and the competition for male attention. And yet, as much as famous bimbos were propped up for their looks, there was a misogynistic cultural obsession with tearing them down. And today, a lot of iconic bimbos are finally getting justice in the court of public opinion because so often in the court of law, they were deprived of it, especially when it comes to rape culture. When 90s icon Pamela Anderson and her husband Tommy Lee's sex tape was stolen and distributed, Pam was victim blamed because she'd shown her body in photo shoots throughout her career. And the question, what was she wearing, is a chilling reminder of how many women's assaults and violations have been downplayed because of their appearance. And the pervasive idea that a woman could be, quote, asking for it when it comes to sexual assault stems from the perception that attractive women are just objects. Today, pop culture is beginning to see women as multifaceted human beings, something that was not previously part of the bimbo stereotype. Shows like Pam and Tommy and Impeachment American Crime Story are forcing people to rethink how women like Anderson and Monica Lewinsky were persecuted for their sexuality, unlike their male counterparts. And in January, the Secrets of Playboy documentary series allowed for some of the most famous bimbos like Holly Madison to reveal the exploitative cult-like abuse she and others endured under Hugh Hefner's tenure. And amid this new wave of bimboism, shows like Selling Sunset portray successful business women who dress like Barbies and make five and six figure commissions unapologetically. And pop music is having a major surge of hyper-femme girl power bubblegum poppiness with artists like Kim Petrus and Doja Cat. And many are confusing bimboism with encouraging stupidity, when really the movement is encouraging self-happiness and propping up others. You don't need to be exceptional at anything. You just need to be yourself. I'm Yoonj Kim. 
And that's what you need to know. 